Let's have a look at the IT13 from Geekcom. They put a Intel Core i9 into this mini PC with 32 gigabytes of RAM and two terabytes of storage. The single threaded performance is outstanding. In fact, this is the fastest benchmark result that I have tested on the channel so far. Here we have Cinebench R23, the single core test, and we are comparing it with all the previously reviewed mini PCs on the channel. But in the multi-core test, well, it struggles a little bit to keep up with some of the other mini PCs that even have less cores. So the processor that chose for this mini PC is the Core i9-13900H. This is a multi-core beast and it does require a lot of power and good cooling to really show what it can do. And unfortunately in a mini PC, we are limited by constraints in terms of power delivery and how much cooling we have. Also some subjective feedback. I do a lot of video editing. I use the shortcut video editor to produce my content in 4K. And what I found is that although the AMD mini PCs in this video can do a little bit better in the multi-core test, the Intel mini PCs just run the video editor a little bit smoother. The playback on the timeline is just better. And that just shows you that it's not always down to the benchmarks and the raw performance. Sometimes certain software just runs better on Intel or AMD. So best to look at the software you're going to use and then make an informed decision. We have 32 gigabytes of RAM configured in dual channel configuration, but they chose DDR4 memory and not DDR5. Very likely to keep the costs down. The memory is from Lexa DDR4 3200 with CL of 22. And if you need more RAM, you can upgrade to 64 gigabytes. The storage performance seems excellent. Here we have some benchmarks from the Crystal Disk Mark. It's a two terabyte NVMe SSD from Lexa and is of PCI Express 4.0. If you need additional storage, there is a M.2 2242 SATA SSD slot and you can also install a two and a half inch SATA drive. It has to fit within the seven millimeter form factor. We have graphics from Intel and although this is a high end solution, it's not quite on the level of what you can get with AMD based mini PCs. Here we have results in the Firestrike benchmark and the result is not too bad, but it simply loses out against the mini PCs with an AMD APU. When testing games, especially older games, which I do a lot, well, it didn't look too good. In Dirt 3, we got a crash straight out of the gate. It wouldn't even launch. And well, does it run Crisis? Here we go. The game, unfortunately, is quite laggy and stuttery. Now, this has been the situation for quite a while. It doesn't seem like Intel is really putting in a lot of resources in place to uh, improve compatibility with old games. And even in this uh, situation, I can see some of the uh, huts not being displayed. For example, the weapons configuration screen is not showing up and the enemies are glowing red. So yeah, not a great outcome. We're having more luck with modern games. This is Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Well, modern, it's now also quite a few years old. It's running at 720p with the lowest details. So this is the lowest settings and it barely achieves 60 FPS. So again, for gaming, this is probably not the mini PC for you. Here we have Strange Brigade. It's a little bit less demanding. This one holds the 60 FPS nicely, but again, this is 720p with low details. So the bottom line is if you are interested in gaming and you value performance, but also compatibility, this is not the machine for you because of the Intel graphics. Running emulators, I feel this is where this mini PC will do really well because it has such fast single thread performance and many emulators still running on a single thread. PCM version 17 is such an emulator. Running a Pentium 2 450 with a Voodoo 3 is very demanding indeed, but this machine seems to be handling it just fine. I'm playing two games and I haven't observed any stuttering or slowdowns while doing this video. At the front of the unit, we have two USB ports and both of these can do 10 gigabits per second. A headset port with the TRS connector, power button here with a white power LED. 
On the right side we have a SD card reader. This is really nice. I create content and so I always need to copy footage from the SD card and this one checks out. It has full speed copying data around 90 megabytes per second. Some other mini PCs in the past they had the card reader connected through USB 2 so it's really nice to see that this one is running at full speed. On the other side we have here a attachment for a Kensington lock. Here we are at the back of the unit with a ton of ports. Power goes here and then we have the high speed USB-C ports. They can transmit at 40 gigabits per second. They also carry display port up to a resolution of 8K 30. Two HDMI ports, these can do 4K 60 and with these four ports we can connect four monitors at the same time which is pretty cool. 2.5 gigabit Ethernet port with a chip from Intel and here we have another 10 gigabit USB port and this one is the old USB 2 with 480 megabit. And we're also getting Wi-Fi 6E again from a chipset from Intel. In the box we're getting a HDMI cable, some screws to install a 2.5 inch SATA drive as well as the VESA mount and some documentation. And here's the power supply, it is rated for 120 watts. Let's have a look at the prices. You're looking at 799 US dollars for the top configuration, that's with the i9 32 gigabytes of RAM and a 2 terabyte storage. So guys, we had a look at the results. What is my takeaway for this mini PC? On paper, the specifications look really impressive with an i9, lots of RAM and huge storage. The storage performance does check out, but a little bit disappointed with the processor and the RAM. So the mini PCs, the form factor, well, there's only so much cooling you can do and you also are limited with how much power you can supply. And that is why the Core i9 can't really spread its wings under multi-threaded situations. Going with DDR4 instead of DDR5, that's a shame. We are losing out on performance and this is uh, the latest model. You really wanna go with the latest technology. I understand why they did that, very likely to save costs. Maybe you can go with an older motherboard model by doing that and the RAM is a little bit cheaper. But at this price level, if you want the best, it should really be coming with DDR5. On the plus side is definitely the single threaded performance. A lot of applications will fly on this machine. Video editing with Shotcut, for example, is what I use. And of course, software emulators, many of them run on a single thread. I also really like the build quality. This one is very well put together and we're getting heaps of ports, especially USB 4.0 at the back. At this point I don't have any external GPU docking stations yet. They seem to be quite expensive but if you have a model that's decent, good value, uh, let me know down below in the comments. Maybe it's something I pick up for future tests. So there you go. That was my take on the Geekom IT13. Let us know down below in the comments what do you think and yeah that's it for this one. Thank you so much for watching and I shall see you soon with another one.